Welcome to the Airgun Show. I'm taking a look at the new Bantam version of the Brocock Compato this week, but first up, I'm heading out ratting on a very rainy night. I'm out ratting tonight. Now, the weather is absolutely atrocious, so we've not gone with our first choice venue. We've had a couple of very heavy rainstorms. There are more forecast, so our top priority was just getting some shelter. So I've come onto the farm where I can shoot indoors. Now, if the rain continues to be heavy, I don't think there are gonna be many rats moving in all honesty. On top of that, I have shot this farm very heavily over the last few weeks. But that said, as you'll probably hear during the course of the evening, the cattle are in, so there's their feed for the rats to target. There are lots of feed stores and silage clamps here. So all being well, there should be one or two moving about. We'll just have to cross our fingers and see what happens. Even with the shelter of the barn, the rain is still blowing in. It looks like we're in for a soggy one tonight, but as long as we're out here, we're in with a chance. Right, well, there's nothing moving at the moment, so I'll just take a, a moment to talk about the kit I'm using tonight. Now, this has become my pretty much standard ratting setup of late. Um, the gun is the Air Arms Ultimate Sporter. That's in 177 just because that flatter trajectory makes it a little bit easier in terms of getting hold over and hold under right. Um, apart from being a very, very quiet gun, it's also really handy for night shooting um, because it's got the 10-shot magazine and that's operated with a very smooth side lever system and it just means I don't have the fuss of having to reload by hand in the dark. It just makes life a lot more convenient. Um, it's quite a long gun, but I've managed not to knock it yet and unless I'm really moving around through the confines of the farm, it's not a problem. Uh, it's also very accurate, which is a great help when you're dealing with what is a very small target. The scope I've got on here is the MTC EVX. Now one really handy feature on this is the fact that it focuses down to about 10 meters, which is useful when you're hunting at close range like this, and it just helps to keep the scope picture from being too blurry. Now also, I keep the magnification down to about six times when I'm ratting. Now that gives me slightly wider field of view than you would get on the higher magnification, and it just makes it a little bit easier for spotting, gives me quicker target acquisition, and just enables me to pick up on those shots a little bit more quickly. The scope's mounted with my usual sports match mounts, and onto that I've got fitted the Night Sight Artec unit. Um, this evening I'm using the Viper, and that one lends itself more to close range work really. It's a perfect tool for ratting, although that said, I've also used it for rabbiting, and although it doesn't quite give you the detection range for real long range spotting, for shooting rabbits at typical air gun ranges, it's well up to the task. One of the great things about the night sight is the fact that it just fits straight onto your usual day scope. So there's absolutely no need to re-zero because all of your aiming points remain exactly the same as usual. So you've got that familiarity right from the outset. One of the things that did take me a little while to get used to was the fact that because your crosshairs appear on the screen that's mounted above the scope, you need to shoot with a head up shooting position, which for me made shooting freehand feel pretty peculiar. Now, the easy way around that is to either shoot from a bipod or on sticks like I am tonight, in which case it's absolutely spot on, no trouble at all to shoot with your head up. 
and in fact something I've done quite frequently particularly when using a gun that's got a flat stock like the ultimate sporter is actually shoot with it down on my lap rest the gun on my lap and just look on the screen that way and it shoots perfectly well like that Another really nice feature of the night sight is the fact that on the Artec unit you've got one touch recording which means you simply press the record button on the back of the camera module and whatever appears on the screen is recorded directly to an onboard micro SD card. Now I'm hoping that we're going to get the opportunity to film a few kills tonight but um, it's looking pretty quiet at the moment. Had we gone to the venue we were planning to shoot at I think it would have been much more productive but the weather's dead against it. Where we were hoping to go is a, a trout farm where we filmed several episodes in the past and it really is, in terms of a ratty habitat, the absolute perfect storm. Um, it's got a river flowing through it and waterways are generally like ratty highways. Um, if you've got a stream or a river flowing somewhere then you've generally got rats coming and going and if they find food they'll generally set up residence. Now obviously at this fish farm the trout are fed pellets and a large amount of those get spilt every time the trout are getting fed several times a day and the rats quickly cotton onto that. They've got a very easy high protein food source there so the population very quickly escalates. Now in the past we've had some very busy nights there. What I'll generally do there is raid the pellet stores, put a few piles of pellets out to attract those rats which have obviously got a real taste for them and we'll just sit back usually using the night sight and wait for those rats to come out, feed on the pellets that we've put down and then pick them off using the stealth of the night vision. It can be really brilliant shooting. Right, well that's enough chat for now. I need to get back to the job in hand, have a bit of a scan around and see if we can't bag a few rats. We've had to wait a long time for a couple of really heavy downpours to pass, but as the deluge dies down it looks like there are some rats on the move, and these ones are very close. Well, we're actually a couple of rats out then. Now, they weren't hanging about, but it's quite encouraging to see a bit of movement. and one of those fidgety rats is soon back out. Well, I think that was one of those two rats that I saw just now. That was very close. It was on a bank, oh, I don't know, about 10 metres to my left. So I gave the shot a little bit of hold over, smacked it in the head. It's the first one of the night. That bank gave me a nice safe backstop for that last shot and safety really is an important consideration when you're shooting around farm buildings. Now there are actually farm workers around tonight so we've had a word with the farm manager and they know that we're here and that's important not just for their safety but also because they're often whizzing around in tractors they know where we are and they know to steer clear. Now also the ultimate sport that I'm using tonight is a legal limit air gun, so it's sub 12 foot pounds and it really is in its absolute element for this sort of shooting at close range, around buildings, machinery and livestock. It just takes away the worry of any carry or ricochet that you might have if you're using a more powerful FAC rated air gun. This isn't a busy night's ratting by anyone's standards, but we stick with it and as the weather relents once more, I manage to pick up another rat on the screen of the night sight. Oh, and there's another one, and that one looked a lot bigger than the first one. Now that one was in the yard and I reckon it was about 18, 20 metres away so that pellet would have been travelling a little bit high at that range so I just gave it a little bit of hold under, smacked it firmly in the head and another good clean kill. 
I continue to scan through the darkness but fail to detect any more rats. The rain is really coming down now. And it just seems that the rats have got more sense than to venture out in this weather. Even if we haven't. Right, I'm going to make that do for tonight because it really has gone completely dead now. We've been here for a couple of hours and the two rats that we did have, they were out and about and moving when the weather had let up a little bit in between the showers, they were presumably venturing out to feed, but it's really closed in now. It's absolutely bucketing down and they seem very reluctant to come out. So I'm going to call it a night and head for home. A challenging night's ratting in some typical British winter weather there. And now, it's the Airgun Show news. This is the Airgun Show news, brought to you by Valley Arms Shooting Supplies. Airgun licensing comes into effect in Scotland from Sunday. It's expected to leave up to 400,000 airguns unlicensed, even though their owners applied for one, which means that they have to put their airguns into storage or give them to a licensed mate. If you already have a firearm certificate, you'll be able to wait until your current FAC expires before getting an airgun license, but you won't be able to buy any more airguns until you get one. Check out the full details on Basque's website. Daystate has unveiled the details of its new Saxon air rifle, the first iteration of the newly revised Wolverine. The updated rifle features a reworked valve system and a new Gary Kane stock, as well as a bolt that can be changed from right to left in minutes. Available in 177 or 22, the limited edition Saxon sells for just under £2,000. Just 150 are being made, so if you want one, get it quick. Good news if you're a Basque member, you'll be able to get into the Game Fair 2017 for absolutely nothing. Complimentary entry is offered for all Basque members to the event at Hatfield House on the last weekend of July. Organisers said that next year, the Game Fair will be bigger and better than ever, with a focus on shooting's positive role in the countryside. And finally... It might still be December, but the February edition of Airgun Shooter goes on sale today. Inside you'll find a head-to-head -head comparison between two springers from Cometa and Webley, a how-to guide for woodland hunting success, and an in-depth review of Kral's Puncher PCP. Plus, there are hunting features from Matt Manning, Ian Barnett, and Mike Powell. And you get the chance to win a BSA Ultra air rifle with £570. Don't miss Airgun Shooter in all good news agents now. That was the Airgun Show news. And a happy new year to you all. It's only about a year since Brocock heralded a dynamic change to their airgun lineup with the introduction of the semi bullpup Compato. Well, Nobody can accuse this British airgun manufacturer of resting on their laurels, as they've recently unveiled the Compato in its new Bantam guise. And, as you can see, it's a pretty impressive piece of kit. You don't have to be Sherlock Holmes to spot the big difference with the Bantam. It's a buddy bottle airgun. I think the chunky bottle at the fore end makes this version look even better, but it also gets you a lot more shots per fill plus some very tasty high power options. This is the highlight version in 177 calibre and it returns 270 shots at around 11 and a half foot pounds from a single 190 bar fill. It does have a discernible power curve but it has an extremely consistent sweet spot of around 200 shots from about 180 bar down. It runs the very efficient Harper Slingshot hammer and valve system and a well positioned gauge on the side of the stock makes it easy to keep an eye on air pressure. The Bantam is available in 177 and 0.22 calibre and 0.25 in FAC. 
High power options include 18 foot panes in 177, 30 foot panes in 22, and 28 foot panes in 0.25. Thanks to the extra capacity of that buddy bottle, the 30 foot pane version returns more than 70 shots from a 240 bar fill. I'm certainly looking forward to getting that one on the range. Filling is done via a quick fill connector, although the design of the stock around the inlet means you can't really get your fingers around it to release the coupling once you've finished. Fortunately, Brokoc supply a collar that makes the job quick and easy. It seems like a bit of an afterthought to me, but it works. The best thing about the filling system is the magnetised dust cap. It's a very simple idea, but it's extremely effective. Just like the original Compato, the Bantam is a compact and relatively lightweight air gun. It's 85 centimetres long and the carbon fibre bottle on the highlight version keeps weight down to about 3 kilos. Consequently, it's no burden to carry and handles extremely well. Better than the original version, I reckon. This is the black soft touch stock, although a beach option is also available. It's an Ambed Extras handle, but it's a very well designed one, and you can put some adjustment into it. The butt pad slides up and down, and you can also adjust the cheek support to ensure that your eye is well aligned with the scope. The stock is also pre-drilled to accept screw-in swivel studs. The steep pistol grip has a decent swell to it to ensure that it properly fills the hand, and there's a well-sized thumb hole cutaway behind it. There are some really grippy panels of stippling on either side of the pistol grip and at the forend. And the design of the forend ensures that some of that stippling still comes into play if your leading hand is on the bottle. The Bantam's metalwork appears to be very well engineered and I'm a big fan of that matte black finish which cuts down on glare and provides protection against the elements. The reach forward intermount provides a reasonable amount of clamping space and should accommodate most scopes. Just like the original Compato, the Bantam runs a very slick 10 shot rotary magazine. Operated by a side bolt, it's smooth and reliable. Just remember not to fire the Bantam without the side bolt fully returned, otherwise you'll probably blow out the breech seal O-rings. The gun is supplied with spares and Brokoc has a very good instructional video on its website, but it really isn't something you want to be messing about with. Although it's located a little way from the action, the adjustable two-stage trigger unit is fantastic. Crisp and predictable with no creep, it's a real asset when it comes to steering shots to the bullseye. And that's assisted by a blade design that I really like wide and flat with a subtle curve. The safety catch is a paddle type switch just in front of the trigger and you push it from left to right to make the gun safe. I think it would be safer further away from the trigger but its positioning does make it very easy to push off when you're ready to take the shot, though it does make a bit of a click. There's a three stage power adjustment dial on the side of the breech. On this one Medium power amounts to around 8.5 foot pounds and low power is about 6 foot pounds. It's not a feature I've ever craved in a legal limit air gun, but I imagine it could be very handy on high powered models. That's the Bantam's main features covered, let's do some shooting. Well that is a fantastic group. We've got just about perfect conditions for accuracy testing today. There really isn't a breath of wind and the Bantam has just put five shots virtually through the same hole at 30 metres. It's got a Lother Walther barrel that's crowned and choked and that obviously makes for some very accurate shooting. It's also very quiet. Now obviously I've got a silencer on here today and it's barely making a sound 
but there's also a deflector within the barrel shroud which really does help to reduce muzzle crack. Now going back to that group, obviously I'm shooting rested here and for a gun of this sort of calibre, that kind of accuracy, although impressive, it is to be expected. But thanks to the fantastic balance and handling of this gun, it's also very easy to shoot accurately whether you're standing or kneeling. I think the Bantam is a fantastic addition to the Brocock lineup. Aesthetics really are a matter of personal taste, but I reckon it looks even better than the original Compatto. It also handles better, plus it gives you a heck of a lot more shots per fill and some very exciting high-powered options. Prices start at £749. This model, the all-singing, all-dancing Highlight Soft Touch, retails at £889. That's all for this week, but we'll be back in a fortnight. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership.